Hello everyone, welcome to the Page Turners. My name is Elizabeth Ortega and I'm going to be your reader for today. Today we're going to be continuing reading Amelia Bedelia Means Business. And we're on chapter 11. Let's get started. Dream Bike Nightmares. As she rode home, Amelia Bedelia got more and more excited about the contest. She told her mom and dad all about it. When I win, she said, I'll get a free bike and you won't have to pay for half. That's nice, honey, said her mom. We'll add the money we would have given you to your college fund instead. We're so proud of you. You're doing a great job trying to earn your half. In her excitement, Amelia Padilli had forgotten all about baking tarts for Pete. Hey, I got a job, she announced. Pete liked my tarts so much that he wants me to bake two dozen a day. He'll sell them at the diner. Congratulations, said her mom. Lots of people go to Pete's. Did you know that the mayor eats at the diner every day? If he likes your tarts, your business could be a big hit. The best advertising is by word of mouth. Mom's right, said Amelia Bedelia's father. You know, winning a contest is a long shot. Dad, I'm decorating a bike, said Amelia Bedelia, not playing basketball. Hey, said her dad, I have an idea. Why don't you decorate your bike like a giant lemon tart? You'll attract more customers and make more money. Then you can buy your bike. That's sure. That's a sure thing. You sure that's sure, said Amelia Bedelia. She turned to her mom. What do you think? That's a tough one, said her mother. I can see dad's point of view, but I also see that you want to try and win the contest, Amelia Bedelia's mother smiled. That means there's only one way to settle this. Get ready, you two. She took a quarter out of her purse and flipped it high in the air. Tell, shouted Amelia Bedelia. Heads, called out. Amelia Bedelia's dad, heads it was. So Amelia Bedelia took her dad's advice. She worked on her bike right up to the morning of the parade. Both sides of the front wheels looked like giant lemon slices. Both sides of the back wheels looked like giant lemon tarts. On her back, Amelia Bedelia wore a sign that looked like a mouth-watering slice of tart. On this slice, she had written, try a bite. Next to the word bite, she had cut out a big to the bite. It was a great white shark size bite. To top it all off, Amelia Bedelia constructed a pair paper mache lemon to cover her helmet. She had painted it yellow. It even had a stem and bright green leaves that fluttered in the breeze. If I were you, said her dad, I would take along some lemon tarts and hand them out to people as samples. That way you can peddle your tarts all over town. Her dad chuckled to himself. Amelia Padilla guessed that he he must have made some kind of joke about being on a bike and selling tarts. She didn't have time to figure it out and from the way her mom was shaking her head and rolling her eyes, it surely wasn't worth understanding anyways. Chapter 12. Try a bite, not. Amelia Bedelia rode her bike to the town square, wearing the parade where the parade was assembling. Suzanne was already there. When Amelia Bedelia saw Suzanne's bike, she was speechless. She felt exactly the way she felt the first time she saw the bike. Suzanne had woven red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet crepe paper into the spokes of her wheels when they went around the colors revolved into a spiral into the center of the wheel it looked like a swirling rainbow suzanne had glued glittery stars in the center of both wheels Millie Bedelia was so dizzy she had to look away was suzanne trying to hypnotize the judges into voting for her there was also a rainbow colored streamers floating out of the ends of her handlebars tiny flags Bunting made out of little paper unicorns and jingle bells hanging everywhere. On the bright side, Amelia Bedelia was glad that she had not wasted her time trying to compete with Suzanne. Maybe Suzanne would toss her the not new anymore bike as she rode away on her brand new bike. The poster in the bike shop had not mentioned that there was a pet parade too. Amelia Bedelia could see cats, rabbits, goldfish, guinea pigs, snakes, mice, and dogs, dogs, and more dogs. The other thing the poster hadn't mentioned was that Wild Bill was the celebrity judge of the bike contest. He was riding with the mayor and Miss Individuality and one of his convert convertibles at the front of the parade. Now Amelia Bedelia was doubly glad that she hadn't tried to win wild bill would never pick her in a million years she peeked under the bright yellow dish to howl in her bike basket there were her lemon tarts all ready to hand out to people in the crowd as she rode by soon it was time for the parade to begin the non-dog pets followed the convertible then came the dogs then the kids on their bikes the crowd cheered and clapped for all 
of the marchers. When Amelia Bedilli pedaled past her parents, they clapped the loudest of all. Hooray for tart tarts, her daddy yelled. Amelia Bedilli waved, flushed, and pretended not to know them. Then it started. Maybe it was triggered by her daddy yelling tart tarts. As Amelia Bedilli pedaled by one of the dogs, he, it turned and looked straight at her. It put its nose in the air and sniffed. Then it began to wag its tail and bark and bark and bark. Amelia Bedilli recognized the dog. It was one of those dogs Diana had been walking, and it had loved the taste of her lemon tarts. Suddenly, a dog on the other side of the street started barking. Uh-oh. It had tasted her tarts, too, and Amelia Bedilli rode on. Dogs started sniffing, wagging, barking, and straining at their leashes, trying to get as close as possible to her. Amelia Bedilli peeked in her bike basket. No wonder these dogs were barking. The basket was filled with tasty tart tarts, and they smelled delicious. Amelia Bedilla decided then and there that this would be the perfect time to give out her tarts. If she passed them out now, maybe the dogs would leave her alone. She also decided that she would never listen to her father again. Peddling tart tarts? Ha ha. Very funny, Dad. Come back here, Bruno. Amelia Bedilla looked behind her. Bruno had broken away and was running to catch up with her. Someone grabbed my dog. Another dog had broken away. Amelia Bedelia pedaled faster. Lucky, stop, stay. And another, and another. Hey, grab that leash. It seemed as though all the dogs in town were chasing Amelia Bedelia in her tart tarts. Maybe it was because they didn't want to miss out on the tree. Or maybe this was how dogs celebrated their spirit of individuality. Or maybe they just loved Amelia Bedelia. She was weaving in and out of other bicycle and marchers, pedaled as fast as she could on her old bike with her lemon head bopping wildly. Fast, she yelled to Sand, who had seen what was happening. She rode behind Amelia Bedelia, swerving back and forth, trying to keep the dogs away. Several of Amelia Bedelia's friends from school pedaled up and tried to help too. Go, Amelia Bedelia, yelled Joy. Faster, called Chip. Tweet, tweet. There was a policeman from the park. He blew his whistle at Amelia Bedelia and held up his hand to signal her to stop. Amelia Bedelia glanced over her shoulders. She had never seen so many dogs. She reached into her basket, pulled out a tart, and put it in the policeman's hand as she sped by. He blew his whistle even louder. She looked back and saw a dog leap through the air. He grabbed the tart right out of the policeman's hand. Like a poor boy snatching a sardine from a cellar, the policeman shared at his hands and counted one, two, three, four, five. All of his singers were present and accounted for woo. Amelia Bedelia saw Pete and Doris up ahead. She reached into her basket and handed them the tarts she pedaled by. Eat them quick, or she warned, and Pete, Pete and Doris were too slow, and a pair of poodles leaped up and gulp, gulp. Those tarts were history. Amelia Bedelia had almost reached out the hand head of the parade. There were still dogs everywhere. She wasn't sure what to do, but she knew she had to get rid of her tarts. She rode in the loop-de-loop -loop pattern, then in a then a circle, then she headed back the way she had come. Everyone was following her, dogs, their owners, and all the kids on their decorated bikes. Amelia Bedelia handed out tarts hearts left and right. Some folks actually got a taste. As Amelia Bedelia rode past the convertible, she tossed her charts to the celebrities. Miss Individuality caught hers with one slender, white-gloved hand. The mayor used both hands. Wild Bill was waving his cowboy hat at the crowd as though he was riding a bronco. Instead of riding in a car, Amelia Bedelia tossed her last tart right into his hat, bullseye. Amelia Bedelia had run out of tarts just as she had run out of parade, but the dogs were still chasing her. The air was full of their barking. Then it dawned on Amelia Bedelia that her bike looked like a huge dog tree. Even worse, the words try a bite were printed on her back. These dogs were pretty smart. Could any of them read? Amelia Bedelia promised herself that if she survived today, she'd never have anything to do with science again. Amelia Bedelia had to keep moving. She circled around and pulled up behind Wild Bill's convertible. She jumped off her bike and let it clatter on the ground. Miss individually helped her climb into the back seat of the car. Amelia Bedelia ripped the enormous tar off her shirt and threw it to the dogs. They had a blast tearing it apart, howling with happiness all the while. Amelia Bedelia slid down into the seat next to Wild Bill. He took one look at the giant lemon bopping on her head and said not you again woof 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 the dogs were barking and drooling and circling the convertible woof 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 get us out of dodge yelled wild bill to the driver the driver put the cart in reverse and backed up crunch the screech of metal being dragged across pavement brought the entire parade to a halt what was that asked wild bill that, said Amelia Bedelia, her bike brimming with tears, was my bike. Chapter 13. So who needs fireworks? If you ever wonder what utter chaos and confusion, mass mayhem, and perfect pandemonium would look like, well, this was it. 
barking dogs started back and forth and kids on the bike swerved around one another and around paths of all shapes and sizes. The crowd clapped and cheered, cars honked their horns, the policeman blew his whistle, all you might say in the spirit of individuality. The mayor managed to make his way to the grandstand. This was where, on a very special occasion, he had given a speech to his calm, quiet, peaceful town. Sandra bounded up the stairs onto the grandstand. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, she called out as she rusted to the microphone. She blew her whistle with all her might, but mysteriously there was no sound. All of a sudden, every dog in the town froze. Their ears went straight up, and they all turned to look at her. Then they put their tails between their legs, and every single one of them slowly slunk back to its owner. The car horns stopped honking. The guinea pigs and rabbits and parrots stopped chattering. The kids on their bikes settled down. Everyone was quiet except for the policeman. He kept blowing his whistle over and over again until the mayor tapped on the microphone, then said, Officer O'Brien, shh. Shh. At least a perfect silence descended upon the entire town. Everyone moved closer to the grandstand to hear what the mayor had to say. The mayor cleared his throat. I'm not sure what happened here today, he said, but it looks like one person is responsible. Would Amelia Bedelia please come up here? When Amelia Bedelia heard the mayor say her name, she wanted to climb into the glove compartment and curl up into a little ball, but she didn't. Wild Bill opened the car door for her and walked beside her to the grandstand. If it's any consolation, he whispered gruffly as he walked along, I think you make one mean lemon to our little lady. I didn't make it to be mean, said Amelia Bedelia. I made it to apologize. Apology accepted, said Wild Bill. Amelia Bedelia wasn't sure what to do. Her charts had caused this. She was to blame. What if the mayor made her pay up to clean the mess? Because there surely was a big mess. Then she would never have enough money to get a new bike. And now she couldn't even jump on her old bike and escape. Her bike, her first sweet, wonderful, one and only bike, was flatter than a chocolate brownie pancake. She was too tired to escape anyway. Besides, it's tough to blend in with a giant lemon stuck on your head. Her parents met her at the steps to the grandstand. Her dad gave her a thumbs up. Her mom took off the big lemon helmet. Millie Bedelia trudged off the stairs to meet the mayor in her doom. The mayor shook her parents' hands. Then he brought Amelia Bedelia forward to stand next to him in the microphone. I was born and raised here, he said, so I can safely say that this town has seen more excitement in the past 15 minutes than it has in the past 50 years. As your mayor, I want to say that it is a good thing when it comes to excitement. Amelia Bedelia means business. People in the crowd began to nod their head in agreement. Amelia Bedelia could hear kids from school screaming and hollering and whistling. She could see Suzanne smiling and Joy and Holly and Clay laughing and smiling together. Everyone knew that they would talk about this day for years to come. Then Wild Bill stepped forward to the microphone, his hat in his hand. Mr. Mayor, everyone in town knows that I've had my differences with this little lady. However, I've come to admire her spirit. She does things her own way. If something goes wrong, she bounces back and tries again. As far as I'm concerned, no one captures the spirit of individuality better than Amelia Bedelia. I declare her to be the winner of the bicycle contest. As the crowd cheered, Wild Bill bent down to say to her, I believe you could use a new bike. Am I right? Amelia Bedelia nodded and smiled and waved to the crowd. As the clapping died down, Wild Bill reached into his hat and pulled out the lemon tar Amelia Bedelia had tossed in. And best of all, he said, everyone in town should know that Amelia Bedelia makes one tasty lemon tart. Wild Bill popped the tart into his mouth and wolfed it down in one bite. The crowd roared its approval again. Amelia Bedelia looked over at her mom and dad and could only mouth the word thanks because of all the cheering. Chapter 14. The Bike Wheel of Fate Turns On her first day back at school, Amelia Bedelia proudly logged her new bike to the bike rack. It was the same exact model as Suzanne's bike, but it was ruby red instead of emerald green. Amelia Bedelia loved it. Suzanne rode up to the bike rack, but something was different. She wasn't smiling the way she had been after the parade. Then, Amelia Bedelia got a good look at her bike. It was a wreck. It was in a worse sh shape than Amelia Bedelia's old bike after it had been run over by the convertible. Suzanne parked right next to Amelia Bedelia. What happened, Susie? asked Amelia Bedelia. I left my bike in the driveway, she said. My mom didn't see it when she went to work, and she drove right over it. Her car got dinged up, too. I've never seen her that mad. She was jumping up and down and dancing around the driveway. Amelia Bedelia tried not to laugh. It's not funny, said Suzanne. My mom told me that I'm going to have to help pay for the damages. She said she would meet me. Halfway, though, 
I've been there, said Emilia Badalia, and I can tell you all about getting a job. Hey, I need someone to deliver my charts. I'll lend you my bike and pay you. Suzanne smiled. At first, it was just a tiny smile, but then it grew bigger and bigger. Emilia Badalia put her arms around Suzanne's shoulder, and she smiled too, and they walked into school together. Well, that was the end of our book. Thank you so much for for reading with me i hope you guys enjoyed and i hope you stick around for another book next time thank you